We've been going camping with our four children for a good few years now, at least four years, and we even went when our now three-year-old was only seven weeks old, which looking back seems crazy. But over that time, I've picked up a number of tips and things that really help to make things go smoothly when you're camping as a family, especially with young children. If you're new to my channel and you've just stumbled across this video, then hi, welcome. I'm Kate, I'm a mum of four. I have two boys and two girls ranging in age from three all the way up to nearly 14. I make videos on this channel all about my life as a mum, as well as sharing recipes and cleaning tips and vlogs of our daily life and camping videos as well. So if you like what you see, then please do hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you. So my first tip, and this particularly applies if it's your first camping trip, is to sit down and make a tick list of your essentials when you're choosing a campsite. So the essential things for us and what is on our list when we're looking for a campsite is that they allow fires. That's a really big one for us because we love nothing more than sitting around a fire in the evening and chatting and making s'mores and playing games and just having that makes it feel really homely. And we've been once to a campsite that didn't permit open fires and it just wasn't the same experience at all. So for us, right at the top of the list are campsites that permit open fires and campfires. And that's something that until we went to one that didn't, I hadn't even thought to check that. So that's a big one. If that's an important part of camping for you, then definitely check that your campsite allows that. Another thing on our tick list is electric hookup. Now we have been camping to festivals and I think to one other campsite where we didn't have electric hookup and it's okay, we can do it, we can get by. But for me, I prefer to have an electric hookup. My husband doesn't care, he would go off grid and be perfectly happy, but I prefer to have, mainly because we have a cool box that plugs in and it just makes me feel better to know that we can leave that plugged in so we can have cold drinks and we can buy things and store them for a couple of days rather than having to buy things fresh every day. I just find it a bit more convenient but also for the kids they do take their devices and I know that's a controversial subject for campers whether or not you allow your kids electronics. We don't generally unless it's chucking down with rain and then they're a godsend. We don't generally allow them to have them much while we're camping but it is nice for them to put a movie on the iPad and all snuggle into one camp bed and watch a movie together while Dan and I then get to have some time to ourselves around the campfire into the evening. So that's a time when screens are useful and therefore an electric hookup is also on our list. The other essentials on our tick list are that there is a shower block or a decent, relatively modern shower block. I've been to some that are really well equipped and have fantastic shower blocks and I've been to other campsites that are the opposite end of the scale and both we've managed but if I'm looking for a potential campsite I will always look at the reviews to see if their toilet and shower facilities have relatively good reviews because then I know I'll feel comfortable with my kids using them and I know that they're clean and well maintained and all that kind of thing. We also prefer to visit campsites that have a shop on site. Again, it's not essential, but if it does have a little farm shop or something, it's really nice for the kids, particularly, particularly the older two, because they can wander to the shop in the morning and pick up some milk or cereal, whatever we've run out of, and it's just a nice experience for them and it just makes life on the campsite that little bit easier. The final thing on our tick list when I'm choosing a campsite is a kids play area. Again we've been to some that don't have that and it's fine we make our own fun but if there is a play area on site it's just really nice for the kids because it gives them that little bit of independence. They can wander down the field to a play area and they have a great time doing that and they always make more friends if we go to a campsite that has a play area as well so that's worth bearing in mind. Tip number two, and one that I've learned the hard way, is to always have snacks available for your arrival and easily accessible. Don't pack all your food away into your camping supplies and not be able to get to it until you've unpacked everything because the camping setup, depending on how big your camping setup is, but ours is quite complex. I'll have to get my husband to do a separate video on our camping setup because he's got it down to a fine art but that means it does take a little bit of time. And when we arrive at the campsite, everyone is always really hungry and over emotional and it just gets a bit stressful. So make sure you've got some kind of snacks easily on hand that you can access straight away 
keep them happy when you first arrive at the campsite. Tip number three and following on from the snack situation is to get the kids involved in any way you can with the setup and the packing away at the end as well. Give them a job and I think I've said this in my camping videos before but there's nothing worse than the kids being bored and asking how much longer it's going to take to set up the tent but if you give them a job and give them some responsibility and something to do even if it's just collecting the pegs or handing them to daddy as he's going around hammering them all in or helping to stretch out the ground sheet or even in the past I've given my littlest a little sweeping brush or one of those you know like a dustpan brush and got her to sweep down the side of the tent as it's going up doesn't need to be done but it still gives her something to busy herself doing and it just tends to make it that little bit stressful you don't need to worry about them running off or doing something that they shouldn't when you're trying to get everything sorted so that is a big one give them a job to do so my next tip is to organize your kit and this is another big one for me there's nothing worse than the tent being a complete chaotic mess with clothes strewn all over the place food everywhere i try don't always succeed but i try to keep things as organized as possible inside the tent and it tends to start off really well and start really organized and deteriorate over the course of the camping trip but at least i have a system in place so everyone knows this is where the food goes this is where the clothes go this is where the bin is and your dirty clothes go here and then we have a little area for toiletries and towels and an area for toys as well so just try and organize everything within your tent and something that helps with that actually is to have those big plastic storage boxes with lids and I tend to keep those organized and ready to go whenever we're planning a camping trip so I have one big plastic box that's filled with our camping tableware and plastic glasses and our cooking bits and bobs and that is all in one plastic box and that stuff is only used for camping so it's always clean and ready to go on our next trip. Then we have another box that's full of like non-perishable things like sachets of coffee and tea bags and a bottle of squash, that kind of thing. You know those ones that you squeeze into water, the little squeezy squash? that sort of thing. Things that don't go off, they're ready to go and you can just take them camping with you next time you're going on a trip. My next tip is to think of different ways to bring the dark to life because obviously you're going to be spending a lot of time, a lot of your evenings outside around the fire as long as it's not raining. So just think of little things that you can do to make that exciting because it's not often you spend that much time outside especially at night with your kids. So I'm talking fairy lights, glow sticks, glow in the dark, pajamas, torches, doing shadow puppets, all that kind of stuff. And glow sticks also come in handy for being able to spot your kids. So if they're running around just outside the tent, you can spot them easily. Also a good one for dogs. If you're taking your dog camping, put a glow stick attached to their collar so you can spot them easily. My kids also like to play lightsaber battles with their glow sticks. It's just really good fun, but it's also quite practical as well. And you can attach glow sticks to your tent ropes so that people don't trip over them. My husband has a tendency of tripping over tent ropes, which amuses us, but it could also be quite painful. So it just helps to be able to spot them. We also use fairy lights and wind them around our tent. And our tent always seems to be the most illuminated tent in the whole field usually. And you can spot it from a mile off. But I like that because it's quite... I don't know, it's, maybe it's just me, but it's quite scary walking back from the toilets in the middle of the night. We're talking two, three in the morning if you were desperate to go and you've had to go on your own. Even with a torch, you can only see the little bit in front of you and there's this big wide open space around you that's very, very dark. So if I can see my tent glowing like some sort of Christmas tree ahead of me, I just put my head down and head straight for that and I feel much better about the dark because it is quite intimidating. I think. Another thing you can do to make the most of the nighttime experience while you're camping is to download an app on your phone. I think there's a few different ones but we've got one called the night sky. I have never seen skies like it when we're camping. It's just amazing to see such a clear view of the stars and the night sky and we've had some really clear lovely evenings when we've been camping and we didn't actually have the app when we went on those trips it's more of a recent discovery but i will definitely be using it next time and you just use it to scan the sky so you hold your phone up to whatever stars you're looking at and it tells you exactly what you can see and you can look around the sky and look for the different constellations and stuff the kids love using it and it would just be a really nice way to spend an evening stargazing outside in nature it just sounds like a really nice idea to me so we will definitely be doing that next time we go camping 
Another tip, and one I should have mentioned earlier actually when I was talking about organizing your kit, but think about your outside covering. Maybe a tent isn't all that you need when you're starting out. You tend to think, or at least I did when we started going camping, tent, sleeping bags, and that's about it. I didn't really think about what I would do if we needed to cook and it was raining, or we wanted to sit outside in the fresh air and it was raining, and the fact that just having the tent is quite claustrophobic when it's wet and miserable, or even when it's dry, it's just nice to have a little bit of extra shelter outside of your tent so over the years we've invested in different awnings and things that extend our tent and give us more living space when we're camping but if you're just starting out and you don't want to make that kind of investment because it does cost a lot over time i would imagine we've done it gradually but you can buy little pop-up gazebos that have sides that you can zip down and open up or you can have them closed to offer like a windbreak as well they're relatively inexpensive I think we got ours for about 50 pounds and it has been a godsend we put that up next to our tent and we sit under there in the mornings while we're waiting for the kettle to boil because sometimes it is a bit drizzly in the mornings and it just gives you an extra living space for not that much more of an investment so just something to think about you could also just use tarpaulins or something with ropes and get creative my husband loves nothing more than figuring out how to drape things to give us more room and more space and more cover so just worth thinking about maybe not just to rely on just your tent my final two tips have actually come from viewers of my videos over the years that have commented on my camping vlogs or camping videos to say we do this and this has been a really good one for us so i wanted to include them to share them with you because they're not things i'd thought of myself so the first one is as i said to use a plastic storage box to put all your bits and pieces in but that also doubles as a baby bath and this is one i wish i'd thought of a couple of years ago because my youngest son aiden who's now seven so maybe back when he was four or five absolutely hated showers to the point where one particular camping trip, he screamed the shower block down. I would avoid taking him for as long as I could, but when it got to the point that he was just covered in melted marshmallow and filthy dirty, covered in mud, and I had to shower him, it was just such a stressful experience. He got so upset, and often you can't control the temperature of the showers in camping shower blocks. It, you just, it's one of those that you press a button, you know, like you get in swimming pools, and it just comes out, whatever temperature it is, and you can't cool it down it was so stressful he just would get really worked up really upset and it was awful so had i thought of it before it's just a genius idea to fill a big plastic box full of water and use it as a baby bath or a four-year-old five-year-old bath as long as it's big enough it's so much better if you have a little one that also doesn't like showers so a really good tip thank you to whoever left me that one and another tip that i was given which i hadn't thought of and I can't believe I hadn't thought of it, is to take a slow cooker. What an amazing idea. Just plug it in in the morning, put in your chili con carne ingredients or your chicken curry or whatever it is you want to cook and just leave it cooking while you're hanging around the campsite all day. I thought that was an absolutely genius idea and one that I will definitely be trying next time we go camping. So those are all my top tips for camping with kids. I hope you found them helpful. I would love to have your tips as well, so please leave them in the comments below. I feel like every time I make a camping video, I learn something new from one of you commenting on my videos, so please do share your tips and advice and experiences, and it will help all those watching this video as well as me. Thank you so much for watching, and if you're not already a subscriber to this channel, then please do consider hitting the subscribe button. I would love to have you. I've got lots of camping videos planned, and I've made lots of camping vlogs in the past of our trips, so I will leave those linked for you in a playlist in the description box if you want to go and watch those as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!